Hi, my name is Miles Nesbitt. I am currently a PhD student um, at Imperial College London looking at evidence and impact of parasite spillover and pollinators. So I'm here to talk to you today about a paper that I co-first authored called Identification of Fungi Isolated from Commercial Bumblebee Colonies. So this work was initially done at Leeds and completed at Imperial College London. So what, what do we do here? So a little bit of a background explanation for this research. Um, pollinator associated microbes are generally quite understudied. We wanted to explore the microbes associated with some alternate bee species rather than the traditional Apis mellifera or the Western honeybee. So what we used was commercial Bombus terrestris adox or the buff-tailed bumblebee specifically native to the UK. Um, and this was because uh, it's estimated that annually over 2 million bumblebee nests are purchased globally for agriculture. So this is becoming an increasingly large share of the overall pollinator agricultural industry. So in the UK specifically, we see a large share of bumblebees being used for fruit crops. So we wanted to see what microbes and fungi we would find in these commercial nests if we were to just basically crack one open and take a look. So what we did was we sampled a little bit of honey, um, some wax from the egg cups, some wax from the honey cups, and some frass from each colony. We did about 0.5 milliliters worth of honey um, and one to two centimeters cubed of the wax and frass samples. So each sample was then placed in a Petri dish with an agar mix optimized to mold, yeast, and fungi and left to up incubate for six days. Microbial growth was monitored for each sample with daily photographs. After six days, the morphologically distinct subcultures were isolated and a representative of each sub of a representative sample of each subculture was sequenced using 18S sequencing. Um, in each of the substrates, the broad microbial growth, um, which was not specific to fungal species, was quantified from photographs uh, of the media plate. And this method allowed us to record microbial growth in general, but it could not provide us with a breakdown of growth by, by any particular fungi species. So the areas of growth per colony and substrate were then summed and converted into binary presence absence of microbial growth. Um, if there was any growth across the six day period, the substrate was considered to have a viable fungus. So the study isolated 11 different fungal species from four different substrates. That's the frass, the honey, the honey cup wax, and the egg cup wax. Um, we found several different interesting species within this, um, including um, some species of penicillin, which have caused food, which are associated with food spoilage, and, but have not traditionally been associated with bumblebee species. We also found um, in egg cups two fungi known to be pathogenic to honeybees, but with unknown effects in bumblebees. This is of the genus Aspergillus. Um, we also found that while frass had the greatest variety of species, it also had the least fungal growth of any substrate, whereas honey had the least diversity of fungi, but the most samples growing. And this is, keep in mind that the bumblebee honey is not the same as honeybee honey. It's a very dilute mixture. It's much closer to a nectar than what would traditionally be considered a honeybee honey. So what's the significance of this? Well, our findings are the first of their kind in bumblebees and can help advise conservation efforts and help ensure continued pollination services um, provided by commercial and wild bumblebees, which are essential for maintaining ecosystem health and food security. Though we do identify a diversity of fungi from the various substrates of commercial bumblebee colonies, we don't yet know the functional significance of this fungi or the generality of findings. We don't necessarily know if this is in all um, commercial colonies, and we definitely don't know if it's in the wild colonies as well. So further research is needed to explore the interactions between bumblebees and fungi, including the ecological and evolutionary implications of these interactions. So what we hope to get across to our readers is that we will there's much more to study in alternate bee species aside from just the western honeybee and very little is actually known about the microbiome associated with these species and there's a lot to be found still on the actual functional aspects of these fungi of any other micro microbes that we find in these commercial colonies all right thank you for your time